Do you know your risk posture? With Crossbow, you can run and analyze adversarial campaigns in real time against your production infrastructure to validate your intrusion detection, antivirus, phishing protection, and incident response. Know your cyber exposure with Crossbow. So excited. This is my last interview. Did I just... Oh, hey, we're recording. Hey, how's it going, Jeff? Man. Paul showing off his professionalism <laughs> once again. I you do a lot of these interviews. So, so you're... I'm waiting to bite my lip because I'm usually up here... Yes. Well, now you can add all the color commentary you want because I'm really tired of asking all the questions and doing. Should, should I interview myself? Doing all the work because uh, you know. So Jeff, how am I today? <laughs> I'm doing pretty well. It's a good day. You know, we're sort of middle of the week and uh, transitioning from you know B sides fund, uh, black hat corporate craziness to what, yeah. what DefCon we insanity. DefCon insanity. You had, another, insanity. you had another word for it earlier in the day. Shenanigans. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shenanigans. Here's to shenanigans. Yes. So speaking of shenanigans, we've been doing the How future How many pieces of, of flair do you have on today? <laughs> 17, dude. Flair. That's the correct number of minimum. Oh, nicely done. You've watched Office Space yeah, way office too many space times. Trivia. I don't have Office Space trivia prepared. I give it to you. I do. That would probably end really badly. But... <laughs> PC load letter. What, the stapler what, was red. What model printer were they smashing in the field? Uh, was it an HP printer? <laughs> <laughs> no. I don't know what it was. I'm just bullshit. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> don't you legit knew that, dude? It was an HP 3. I don't think it was an HP. No. Probably didn't show the brand of the printer. Yeah, probably. Because they would probably get sued <laughs> for that. <laughs> no, they got royalties for it. Yeah, or they, or you get royalties. Placement. Right. I'm not sure I'd want my with product a, with a twist. Place. Yeah. All right. Future of security. You ready, Jeff? Yes. Uh, you could probably recite these questions now. <laughs> what are some of the major changes you hope to see in security over the next five years? How many do I get to say? Some. Um, what I would like to see. One. One is when we talk about security, somehow we get beyond a presumption that we're talking about technology. I think we need, and this is what I've been talking about uh, speaking this year, is I kind of think we need to go back to the beginning. It's, it's, my, it's my career, but when I started in security, security was protecting something, and we knew what it was we were going to protect, and we knew how long we needed to protect it and from whom. Um, and we've tried to... Sort of you know, basic risk management. Well, yeah, I mean, we're in the business of risk when Absolutely. we get down to it. Uh, so nice segue. Um, one of the other things I'd like to see change is, is a better understanding, especially, you know, in, in black hat, black hat vendor land today. I can't tell you how many, uh, well, it's pretty much all of them. They've got risk, threat, vulnerability somewhere splashed. But I guarantee you, you go up and ask them, what is risk? What is threat? They can't define it. Mm. Now, granted, it's the sales and the marketing folks sometimes, and you don't want to pick on them too much. But if you go find the sales engineers and the techs, they're still going to fum fumble with what it is. Um, uh, you know, we're in the risk business, and we don't know what we're trying to protect largely. Um, and when I was where I used to work, which was the government, the DOD, the three-letter agency, um, we used to we used to try to figure out how to protect the systems we were building and we would run risk models and we would and we would have brainstorming sessions what could go wrong what could somebody do and we try to quantify that using risk models but basically risk is a function some sort of algorithm that's a combination of threat mm -hmm. vulnerabilities and we we called them back in, in our day countermeasures but countermeasures could loosely be called security and what we talk about as an industry for the last 25 years. And we talk a lot about the vulnerabilities like and the threats. And, and basically, you know, if you can reduce threats, reduce vulnerabilities, and when you can somehow negate them with countermeasures, you're driving this, pers this risk down to something approaching zero. So we're in the risk business, but we always, and this is what frustrates me, we're always talking about one part of it and what's particularly irritating to me is when it's talked about one of those component parts as if that's the whole thing. Whereas we don't have a discussion of risk and, and 
yeah, threats are important to talk about, but it's a component of an overall picture. Same with vulnerability, same with countermeasures. Um, so, you know, I can, we can't see the forest for the trees. No, because we're 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 yeah we're we're too into the weeds of whatever it is we're our our company's trying to sell. Right. And I'm not trying to diss vendors, but we all do it. You've had you've had interviews this evening and where you've been into the weeds on certain stuff, and I've been biting my tongue off camera because I've been, I've been wanting to say yeah, but <laughs> you know think bigger picture, and then let's have the discussion about the specific points. So. Um, more education, you know, in, you know, as my curmudgeon-y, you know, uh, role trying to figure out You? What to do. Curmudgeon? Yes, Never. Very curmudgeon But curmudgeon I, I like, like what you, you said, Jeff, about, uh, you know, when you talk to vendors, because I talked to a lot of vendors mm -hmm. today, right. and, um, you know, asking them about risk, threat, and vulnerability would be awesome. I think we should include that in our repertoire based on what you just said. Mm -hmm. um, but also, I, you know, I asked them what problem they solve. And then I start quantifying that with like, you can't use the word AI or machine learning right. because you don't need it to describe what problem you're trying to solve, that's your solution. Right. And anytime you ask a vendor any question seemingly, I mean, overgeneralizing, but they respond with their solution. Right. But you haven't told me why and you, you haven't told me why there's risk. Really? Why there's a threat? Why there's a vulnerability? Like the, I went through a, a, an accelerator down in Virginia, and one of the first things they tell us is, no matter what you do, explain the problem you're solving, because if you don't, you can't make it real to the person you're and talking to. The founders of the company often get a lot of that knowledge in the early people, but it doesn't translate into sales and marketing people that are on the show floor. At that's fascinating. Most conference at all conferences actually. And you're touching, on, security today. you're touching on, on what's almost an eternal problem for not just our industry, but uh, industry in general, mm -hmm. civilization. You know, the companies that we go out and sell our products to are involved in different industries. And one of the things I've been talking about this year is this idea of when I got started, and I tell a story of when I got started my first government job working for a naval facility, um, there was something different about that environment because the culture of the whole organization was security. There was a mission, and everybody understood why the rules were there, why they were in place, why they were important to be followed. And while there were, it was mostly physical security, and there was layers of physical security, there were supporting processes behind the physical security. You know, there was a perimeter fence, but the perimeter fence also had barbed wire on the top, and it also had cameras monitoring it. And mm -hmm. in some certain places I've worked, there have been other things that I can't talk about that are you know, protecting that perimeter. But then you go to the building and you got to get past a security guard at, a, at, at the front desk or, you you know, later on it was, you've got a badge, it's a proximity reader, or you're typing in a code with your badge, you know, whatever. There's always layers and there's process. But everybody understood it was important and everybody understood their role. We don't do that in the commercial industry these days because everybody just does their thing. But if 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 we're going to change and, and produce something that we can call is a secure environment, work environment, culture, whatever, I think we need to kind of go back to, we talk about going back to the basics, but go back further to the, you know, technology basics, to the fundamentals of understanding what it means to do security. You're trying to protect something. You know what it is. You know where it is. You know how long you need to protect it. You know why you need to protect it. And you, ne you need to know... An, and you know who you're protecting it from. Yeah, no, I like those points a lot, actually. It's refreshing. It's Although amazing it's not how new, it's lessons it's you learned a long new. time ago. It's not new, and, that, and that's frustrating, because I, I, you know, I'm, I'm looking to 2018 and, and trying to figure out, you know, what, what, do I wanna, what do I want my message to be the mm -hmm. ne my next wave of talks? I'm like, how many times can I come up with a creative new way to say something that's really old, fundamental, that we all should know anyway, but do it in a sexy new way that's fun. I, I'm not laughing at you. It's just that we're all saying, do the fundamentals, do the basics. Mm -hmm. Go back to the simple stuff and fix that, and you'll fix 90% of your problems. That is a theme, that is a theme Josh. Going back to it. I, I mean, we've lost that. I mean, that, that, that knowledge, that fundamental knowledge of security is not out there anymore, I don't believe. So, w w w okay, let's back up a step. Okay. That's interesting. Do you mean that if I went to a, a graduate of not only, uh, whether it's college or on-the-job training, whatever, you think they don't actually have the ability or the knowledge to do basic fundamental security? 
define security in that sentence? There's no right or wrong. Just give me a context of, of your question. Let's start with, uh, you started with physical security. Can we start with physical security or do you want to start with information security? Well, those are both subsets of, you know, what is it you're trying to protect? Uh, agreed. Agreed, okay. agreed, agreed. So put, the, you know, frame your question in the context of what problem you're trying to solve. Uh, okay. Let's ask, ask the question the right way, Josh. What is wrong with you? <laughs> I'm sorry. Don't hurt me. So we're going to get one of these sticks over here or something. That's right. You better Smack do it right. Thing. Do it right. Oh, <laughs> please may I have another. <laughs> uh, you fat penguin. Oh, <laughs> flounder. <laughs> wrong move. Right after. <laughs> Thank you. Wow. My brain just exploded. <laughs> so, um, okay. You lie to a nun, man. <laughs> you can, but it hurts. Sometimes that's good. So, <laughs> so uh, let's frame a question about security. Uh, per uh, base security. Yes. You were talking about base security before. So let's talk about base security. Physical base security okay. uh, in terms of protecting a base from a physical attack. Not a logical attack, a physical attack. Let's start there. A base. You mean like an acoustic base, a stand-up base? Military base. A military base. Like, okay. like all your base. Okay. Well, or, and let's take the classical long example. Toss. And it's, it, that's a good question because... You're laughing. You don't even know the reference. Sorry. The, the, idea, the idea of protecting a base or a fort or a complex is, right. is a thousand, thousands of year old concept. Thousands of years old, yeah. And we've been doing it pretty much the same way. We, we build walls. We build barriers. We build moats. We build... You know, fill it with alligators, whatever. We put it on the coast, so or we put it on a cliff. That was and Jack's first job in security, which is kind of <laughs> <laughs> getting the alligators. But, but you know, there's some idea. There's some idea, and this goes back not just to bases, but this is you know, pe you know, the the Lord of the Manor protecting himself and, and you know, building the castles and things like that. I thought it was the guy in the top that yelled, "Go away, or I'll fart in your general direction." <laughs> is that? Go away! I will fart in your general direction. You want me to really b blow your mind? It, 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 no. Mother's I'm not hamster. Go there. I'll, maybe later when we. Father maybe. smells of elderberries. Um, you know, so the concept is layers, but the concept is also you put your most critical assets, which is the lord of the manor, and the food and the water and and the resources. If you're going to be under siege, right, and thinking right, back. Right in the innermost part in the inner bailey normally yeah yeah and 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 it's an actually you know i actually use this illustration in the talk i've been given this year because even that is it, you have all these layers of protection and the layers of protection the idea is not it's perfect security in the sense of nobody can ever get there to that crown jewel to that innermost wherever you are it's it's going to take a whole lot longer and it's going to be costly and it's going to be time consuming and at some point is it worth it well, that's the point. You measure the, the, the threats against the assets and, and the cost of performing the... Yeah. yeah. I sum it up basically. I, I framed my talk this year as you know, the risk equation in, in, in the government sense and the national security sense is roughly, you're talking about human life. Yeah. You know, the, the risk of human life loss, whether it's the military, whether it's uh, intelligence you know, agents, citizens yeah. abroad, whatever. But in, in a commercial concept, context, the risk equation has to be uh, overwritten by uh, economics. It, the right, of course, the risk it's commercial. Right. And yeah. every element is not only are we going to do it, but how much does it cost to do it versus not doing it versus the other element versus the other element. <laughs> you don't understand. It's been an ongoing thing through the interviews. His foot, his hand, apparently his his wood. <laughs> the Sorry. wheels are coming. I, I held it together for the most part. I only lost it one other time, other than this. It's been a really long day. He put his wood on me. Is that a problem? But but you know, and and I'm not saying there is a way to apply this in the commercial sense. But I think there needs to be some consideration and thought given to it, rather than a, a thousand new vendors coming up with a thousand new point solutions that solve. If they're lucky, and we're lucky, they know what problem it is they're trying to solve. Beyond, well, there's this niche of the market where we think there's a lot of money there to be made, and we think we can get it. <laughs> look, look, look. That was the dad look, you know that. That was the dad look. That was the son. Do you really want? Me? I mean, that was cute, son. But do you really want me to get out of this chair? Because I'll whoop your ass. <laughs> do, you, do you want to go out and play tonight? Because 
You remember, I have the cigars and you don't. <laughs> That's not normally what dad says, but okay, it works well, in this instance, yeah. It's a model. Sorry. So, that was just the first question. What else? Oh, God, no. We, I don't think we can, but I, I think that was fascinating to see what you were saying about the, the, you know, you modeled defense in depth without everyone's calling it that. You modeled uh, the layers as, as an onion, uh, layers of an onion, that you have to peel that onion layer at a time, layer at a time, layer at a time, and the cost associated with it. Do you know what you get when you peel all the layers back of an onion? Nothing. It's nothing there. Right. Nothing and, and by the time by the time you peel that onion, that's what should be left, because it should have cost you enough to peel that onion that's right. not worth it anymore. But that was just in your I'm nose. A, you know, I, and I'm a consultant. I, I'm not a vendor um, by most of my career. And, and, and my early part of the career is an analyst. I'm, I'm a problem solver. I want right. to go and try to figure it out. So I want to have the discussion of defense in depth with and, you know, an insurance company in the insurance industry or a bank in the financial industry or I did PCI for many years, you know, a, a retailer, uh, an e-commerce retailer, a hotel chain, uh, you know, a, a, a fast food joint, a grocery store in the context of their industry, their world, and put it in, put all these concepts into a, uh, into a context that they can understand and make sense of it. Cause to me, they're intuitive, and, and I think I can make people understand it. And if they understand, oh, we're trying to protect uh, consumer credit card information, our customers, uh, because we've gotten this great advantage. We can run people through the line in seconds now. We're in the old days. Uh, there used to be these things called telephones. They'd hang on walls. And if you I had one in my house growing up. Purchase, you know, at some point Back when teller, rocks were soft and dirt was young. Around, call an 800 number. Wait for an operator. Dial in the or say the credit card number, the amount, the expiration. Wait for the authorization. That took sometimes five, eight, ten minutes. Now it's swipe. Wait a few seconds. You're done. You're gone. No, it's insert with the chip. Now, if you're lucky, uh, don't go there. <laughs> Play with your chip. I'll talk to you. Gotcha. <laughs> I can use Android Pay on my my phone too. You can. So and do you use safe, Jeff? Do you use it? Do you use Android Pay or Apple Pay? I do not. Interesting. And I and I don't do it because when I asked, uh, are they PCI compliant? They were said, well, that's a question for somebody else. And no uh, matter who you ask, it's and the same I said, answer. Really? Has it been security tested? You know, tell me about your algorithms. Tell me about your cryptography. Tell me, you know, how do I know it's secure? And they're like, well, we're Apple. I'm like, and <laughs> have you had it independently tested? Well, we're Apple. And for and Jeff, it may Mann, very well be the best thing, but that's not a satisfactory answer for me. Because when I built and designed crypto systems, our premise was the adversary knew everything there was to know about the device or or algorithm or whatever. You assumed they, that, right? Yeah, yeah. You, it's a starting they place. Know, they know everything about it. They mm -hmm. have one. They've reverse engineered it. They know exactly how it works. They have the instruction manual. They have access to everything. Secure it anyway. Right. That's the premise I go into. Not, well, it's proprietary. We can't tell you what we're doing. Wrong answer. Mm -hmm. It's interesting. You, you raise this point of they know everything. Can you still secure it? Mm -hmm. And the, 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 you know, it's like NASA. They don't build systems that are going to fail. They build systems that can't not work. Right. And, and with that, thank you, everyone. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you.